Hey, so I just want to do a quick video uh, introducing people to a couple power supplies that I have, showing you how useful they can be, and uh, basically helping walk people through the difference between constant current and constant voltage. Okay, so in front of me I have the long way uh, variable bench power supply. It goes up to 30 volts and up to 10 amps, as you can see there. And I'll have a link, an affiliate link, in the description below. And this is the Kung Burr. Uh, this is also a DC power supply. Um, same thing, 30 volts up to 10 amps. Uh, but they actually make models uh, in multiple colors for this, in black and white, and they do all the way up to 120 volts with 3 amps or 60 volts with 5 amps. So a little bit more flexibility there with uh, what you can get from there. Otherwise, they're really super similar. They both turn on and off. They both have a ground and uh, negative and positive inputs. Um, the main advantage, I think, from this one is that this only has one knob for adjusting voltage. This has and one knob for current, whereas this has uh, a coarse and a fine knob for voltage, a coarse, and a fine knob for amperage. Um, the Kung Burr also has a um, USB uh, input, which is really nice, so you can get power out of this. Um, uh, and the Kung Burr also has a little more accuracy. So this has only two digits behind the, only the tenths and the hundredths place. This goes all the way to a thousand, so one millivolt can be measured on this. Although, honestly, these are, these are just pretty affordable Chinese bench power top supplies. I wouldn't expect them to be super accurate. So I wouldn't worry too much about them, uh, about that. I don't think that's a huge advantage. Otherwise, uh, they have a light when they're in this. This light will light up if it's constant current, uh, constant voltage. This will light up if it's constant current, and then it has a CV and a CC over here. So deep down inside, these are really, really ben similar bench power supplies, and they're going to behave really, really similarly. Okay. Uh, the one other thing is this one turns on in front, which I like. This one turns on in back, which I don't like. The other thing is this one turns off instantly. This one takes like. 10 or 15 seconds to turn off. I don't know why. It's really annoying. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to turn off, let's talk about how you use these. Okay, so basically what you do before you connect this to any load, and it's always good practice to set all your settings before you connect this to any load. Okay, so before you connect this to, you know, a battery that you want to charge or some sort of circuit you want to run or anything you're going to use this with, um, before you do that, you're going to want to set your settings here. So the first thing you're doing is you're setting the ceilings on these, right? So when I set these before I connect them to anyone, I'm basically saying, what's the maximum voltage I'm going to supply? And what's the maximum current I'm going to supply? And the thing is, you can only set one of these settings at a time. So I can adjust current, and when I, I actually am adjusting the maximum current, but I can't see it. So in order to, do, to actually see what you're setting, you have to, do, you have to set things like this. Firstly, let's set the maximum voltage. I'm gonna set my maximum voltage to 4.5 volts. That means when I connect this thing to power supply, I'll never supply more than 4.5 volts. I might supply um, less than 4.5 volts, but never more, okay? Okay, now I wanna set the same thing, a ceiling for the amperage. How do I do that? I connect these two, and now you can see the amperage ceiling. Right now it's set to five volts, sorry, five amps. I'm gonna move that down just to one amp. Okay, so now uh, the most I'll ever supply is one amp. The thing about these power supplies is they're either gonna supply their peak voltage or their peak power, but they're not gonna supply both, okay? So if you, depending on what type of load you're gonna set them to, either this will be the constraint, it's gonna supply the maximum voltage with a lower amount of amperage, or it's gonna supply the full amount of amperage but at a lower voltage, and that's constant current. So when the current is at its max, that's constant current, and when voltage is at its max, it's the constant voltage. What you're setting before you set things, th things to a load is you're setting the ceilings. You're basically saying don't ever do more than this, okay? And the uh, things work exactly the same over here. Before you touch them together, when, it's, when there's no... When there's no left on, when there's no load or anything on these, you can adjust the voltage. And as soon as you connect these two together, now you can adjust the current. Okay, let's set that current to. Let's set it to one. Okay, and you can see constant current is lit up right here. Constant current, and I can use the fine to get that almost to exactly one, right? And the voltage, I'll adjust the voltage to let's do four point. 4.2. Perfect. Okay. So that's what you want to do before you charge things. You want to set your constant, your maximum voltage and your maximum current. Okay. Voltage use without these connected. And then when they are connected, that's how you can adjust current. Important thing to know though, is if you move these, 
you are going to adjust. If you move any of the knobs, no matter what setting you're in, you are going to adjust the maximums, even if you can't see it. So what do I mean? Well, this is amperage, remember? Why don't I move the amperage way up? So remember what the amperage was? It was one amp. Let's disconnect this. Okay, let's move amperage. I can't see amperage. Maybe this isn't having any effect. Well, uh, let's collect them again. It did have an effect. We went from a maximum of one amp to almost a maximum of seven amps. So even though I couldn't see it, I was adjusting the ceiling for the amount of amperage I could set. Let's set that back down. Uh, another thing that I forgot to mention is this does show the watts, the total power, but that's just these two numbers multiplied by each other, so it's not like it's actually that helpful. It's something you can calculate yourself pretty easily. Okay, so that's always important to keep in mind. If you, if you, if you don't see it changing, doesn't mean it isn't changing. If you move these knobs, you are adjusting the ceilings uh, of what you can supply. Okay, so again, if I adjust the voltage here, Guess what? The voltage went from 4.2 to 11.18. So if you touch these knobs, you are adjusting the ceiling. Okay? Usually, if you can't see the change, if you're only looking at the current or the voltage, it means that that's not the binding thing. So for example, you know, if I supply a load and I'm in the constant current mode and I adjust the voltage, it means that, hey, I'm supplying constant current. The voltage is just going to be a, a function of that. So if you adjust this, it doesn't actually change what's being supplied, but it is changing the ceiling. So if the situation changes, it will, in fact, change what is supplied. That can be really important for battery. Let me show you. Okay, so let's set this battery to 4.2. And here's a little lithium iron battery. The battery's maximum voltage is 4.2. The way batteries work, and I hope most people are familiar with this, is as you charge them, the voltage of the battery increases. So the voltage will go from something like, you know, 3, and then as it charges up all the way, it'll go all the way to 4.2 as it increases in capacity, right? But when we just start charging the battery, right now the battery's only got a voltage of 4. So I'm going to work with this power supply first, right? So it's got a voltage of 4. So what's going to happen is when I connect these, we're going to go into constant current mode. It's going to give all the current it wants because the battery can take probably up to 2 or 3 amps, although you should only charge it at 1. And that's why I set a limit of up to one. But it'll take up to two or three. It'll, it's going to take all the amperage we can give. But because the battery is only at about uh, a voltage of four, it's going to be at a voltage of four. That means this voltage is going to drop down to the voltage of the battery. So it's only going to supply at the battery's current voltage is. And as the capacity goes, this voltage is, would slowly trickle up. So let's do that. First, let's negative to negative, positive to positive. And what do we, what do we see? This red light turned on. Now we're in constant current. We're supplying 1.05 amps, which was my limit, and we have a voltage that's below, below what my ceiling is, right? So this is the binding constraint. Now if I tweak this up, it doesn't have any effect on the voltage I'm supplying, but it is changing the maximum voltage. So for example, when I take this off, we can see I changed it from being 4.5 to 5.4, right? So now, as the battery charges up, it's going to eventually get to 4.2. This might take an hour or so. This number will go up to 4.2. But because my, my limit is 5.4, it's going to keep trying to pump higher and higher voltages into the battery and overcharge the battery. That's what would happen if I set the voltage limit too high. Okay? Notice, again, I can adjust the current limit. So if I wanted to supply two current, two volts, uh, sorry, two amps, I could do that. But I want to only supply one amp. Okay? But this is a battery. So... I don't want to ever charge it more than 4.2 volts. That's the maximum voltage for this battery can take. So I don't want to have a setting where the maximum voltage can go up to 5.4. Okay, it'll keep, as the battery charges, it's going to overcharge that battery. What I want to use is use this one. This has a setting that's now I've set it to 4.18. That means as I charge it, it's when it gets to 4.18, it won't charge any higher. So same thing is going to happen. We're going to connect these. We go down to slightly lower voltage, about 4 volts. Okay, and we're at the amperage constraint. Okay, notice these are not super precise machines, right? This is at 4.07. This was at something like 3.9. So this maybe is just not quite as accurate as that. It might be slightly different wires. You can't get to, these are not hyper-specific power supplies. Okay, but bottom line is you're going to want to use these ceilings when you're charging uh, batteries. You're going to want to use the amperage ceiling to set the maximum amount of amps you want to charge it at, and you want to set the voltage ceiling to the highest voltage, the, the full capacity. So if the full capacity of the battery is 4.2 volts, you want to set that to 4.2 volts so it'll never charge above that. I've destroyed batteries by accident because I adjusted the voltage knob. I didn't see it change, and I was like, oh, what's going on? And I didn't realize I was setting the ceiling higher. So when it got to 4.2 volts, 
the battery tried to the the power supply tried to supply more than 4.2 volts, 5 volts or 6 volts, and that will overcharge your battery and destroy it. Okay? So that's how those work. The last thing I want to show you is when you're not dealing with a battery, um, when you're dealing with a normal supply. So some things just want to get supplied, and they will um, they're going to limit the amount of current coming into them. In which case, you're going to be in the constant voltage mode, right? So let's work with this power supply. This, what I have right here is a battery, a battery capacity tester. For our purposes, we're just gonna use it to adjust how much current we're gonna draw from this. So with, right now at these settings, we're gonna draw no current, but then as I twist this knob, the amount of current I would draw from it will increase. So let me hook this up to, let me first, whoop, let me first adjust the amount of current. So I'll allow myself to take up to, let's say 10 amps, that's pretty good. Our maximum will be 10 amps, which is the maximum of this machine. Okay, so now let's hook the reds up to the reds, the black up to the black. Okay, and you can see I'm in constant voltage mode and I'm not drawing any amps. This says 0.05, but it's actually set to zero. So let's increase this. And now I'm drawing 1.6 amps, 1.6 amps, right? And this voltage reading is 3.18, but this is just not particularly accurate, unfortunately. But this is basically, we're still in constant voltage mode. Basically, I'm not drawing, I'm not at the limit of the amount of current. I'm below the current limit, so it's trying to supply the maximum voltage, okay? And that's great, that's exactly what we want. We don't wanna, you know, we don't, we're not trying to get the maximum amount of amperage, okay? So in this case, I'm drawing, but I'm in constant voltage modes because I'm drawing less than the full amount of amperage. But, for example, if I increase this, and I can increase this past 10, Right now I've gone past 10, but the most this will supply is 10 amps, right? So we've hit the limit on what this unit will supply. And guess what? The voltage dipped down. Now we're in constant current mode. We're getting the most current out of it we possibly can, just like a battery, but the voltage is gonna, gonna be the thing that has to adjust because of Ohm's law, okay? So again, but once we go back down below 10, immediately we're back down to a much lower amperage and we're back to constant voltage, okay, because of Ohm's law. So now the voltage is fixed and the amperage is the thing that's adjusting, okay? So those are the two different types of loads you'll have. You might have a battery, which is always gonna pull as much current as it can, uh, you, even to the point where you can supply more current than the battery is actually healthy for the battery, or you're gonna be in a standard load situation where you're gonna have a resistor or something else that's limiting the amount of current, in which case you're gonna get the max voltage, okay? When current is limited, you're gonna get constant voltage, and when current isn't limited, you're gonna get maximum current and variable voltage, okay? But otherwise, in terms of buying these units, I think they're both great. I slightly like this one because I just think it's a little easier to use and less finicky, but this is the more advanced unit. It's slightly more accurate. It's got the USB. It's got the coarse and fine. Um, it's got a slightly better label for its lights. Um, it does have the turn off in the back, which I don't like, but otherwise, they're really, really similar units. I have affiliate links in the description below, so uh, if you're interested in these units, please use the affiliate link, and if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Otherwise, uh, post in the comments. Please like or subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate any feedback to sort of get me to keep doing this video. So thank you very much, and I hope this was helpful.